TV bringing you a special edition of uh, Nigeria 
decides 2019. It's a special edition in the sense that we'll be bringing you uh, people who who are aspiring to for elective, not selective, because that's uh, that have been the the situation many years now, and that's about to change. It's going to be electing people will have to elect the leader they want to govern them. Uh, today we have one of the aspirants. Uh, this gentleman will tell you who he is because I'm going to be. We'll be asking him who he is and how, why does he want to be. Why does he believe he's the right person to be president of Nigeria? Well, with me on the set today, that we. Uh, Talking to this aspirant is uh, my co-host uh, Jerry Klinser. Yeah. Hello. And the uh, guest is uh, Tokwe Faswa. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks for inviting me to the program. Yes. And uh, we're going to go on a short break. When we come back, we will start the business of talking to you and then getting to know you. And our viewers definitely they cannot wait. Thank you very much. Okay. Sir. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back to uh, this special edition of uh, Nigeria Decides on Heritage TV. And uh, our guest is uh, getting ready. We're going to warm it up in a minute. But please be uh, informed that this is a program that is, is your program also, because this is uh, an opportunity for you to be part of this program. And uh, you have all the uh, opportunity of sending in your questions. Uh, you might not be able to call in, but you can text, you can uh, send your WhatsApp messages. To that. And also, we want you to share this program with your friends and family. Uh, you can do that on uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter. You can also do that on WhatsApp. You can also uh, use the uh, latest invention. Uh, what's it called? Is Instagram? Instagram. 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 Yeah, you can also do that. So be ready. Uh, Come in any time you want, say whatever you want to say. Feel free to ask questions. We will read it out, we'll ask him, and uh, I'm sure uh, with the period we are going to be together, he should be able to give you um, answers. Let's get started. Who are you? Okay, thank you and very much. what do much. you want from Nigeria? Aha, uh -huh. okay, that's fine. <laughs> so my name is uh, Takwe Fasho. I'm, um, uh, well, I'm 46 years old. Um, um, I'm an ex-banker. I'm also an economist. Mm. I'm a chartered accountant. I worked for about 13 years in the banking sector, left as a regional director, 
And um, since then, I've been running my uh, consulting firm, Global Analytics Consulting. And, and also, I'm the president of the Institute for Service Excellence and Good Governance in Nigeria. That's the only one, actually, in, uh, in Africa, if mm -hmm. you ask me. And apart from that, I'm an author. I have four books I've written, um, all on the subject of Nigeria, the socio-economy, the politics, and how do we move forward. And I've written over 2,000 uh, articles as well. I'm a columnist with uh, the Abuja-based Daily Trust newspaper, as well as, um, um, as, well as um, I'm also a columnist with Premium Times, among other things. All right. Um, that's quite an wear this. In, impressive, that's quite an impressive, uh, you know, resume you've uh, put together. Question I'd like to ask you is, um, you're currently the chairman of uh, a national uh, um, party, right? Uh, the national chairman of the abandoned Nigerian Renewal Party. Yeah. How long has this party been in existence? So we, the party was actually formed on the 16th of December, 2016. That was where we went for our, um, um, you know, to start the process of getting our license from INEC. That was the day we kind of finalized which name we were going to use. And um, we, we moved forward to INEC to try and um, to get it registered. So on the 16th of December 2016. Um, and um, we were finally approved uh, on the uh, 14th of December 2017, okay. just two days before it will clock one year. Mm. And we got our license on the 10th of January 2018, um, which is this year. We got our full license to operate. By the time we got our full license, we were 27,500 uh, members. Mm -hmm. Because what we did was from the moment we started, when our website was ready, on the 21st of December 2016, we opened the process up to everybody to be able to join and belong to that party. It's the most transparent um, political project so far in Nigeria. And if you went on our website, www.anrp.org.ng, you will see that uh, we maintain a count. If anybody joins this moment, the name is logged in, the number is logged in. And within a space of two minutes, if you wanted to download all our entire membership register, we, can we do that? So it's, it's also tech driven, uh, very transparent, no opacity in our affairs. Mm -hmm. It is crowdfunded, all right? Though Nigerians are not used to that idea of crowdfunding. Yes. Um, but um, would they believe most Nigerians, surprisingly, uh, even some Nigerians in the diaspora, believe that um, a party is uh, what you go and look for one big man to come and finance. finance. And when you look for that big man to finance that party, what you get is a scenario where the man dictates everything that happens in the party and does whatever he likes and all of that, which is not uh, the way forward. So we're running on crowdfunding. And we also publish our accounts twice a month. So every 15 days, we publish the general accounts of the party uh, and say, this is what we receive, this is what we've been spending on, and you know, then we move forward with that. And um, in a short while, we're also going to be publishing our accounts in the newspaper uh, to have a proper balance sheet and um, you know, statements of income and expenditure. Why are you really doing that? Yes, because um, we realize that um, we can no longer sit uh, by, by, the, by the side and on the fence, you know. Um, you tilt, you have to tip over one way or the other. Um, at 46, I realized that, look, um, a lot of the guys that we were complaining about, you know, Buari and Co., they had been in governance since they were in their 30s. And so uh, at over 40, um, my generation that's over 40, between 40 and 50, 55, um, we had become too docile. For too long, we were chasing money. Everybody wanted to be in banking, in oil, in uh, lately telecoms, and so on. And we felt that we just needed to impress people around us with our personal achievement. So it was all about business class tickets and first class tickets. 
expensive holidays, big cars at home, bigger mansions, and so on. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then, I mean, it's a bit uh, no-brainer that um, if you have all those kind of opportunities where you are still unhappy and you have, you're living in a country where you're not safe, where you have your own local government uh, pro prepare, uh, providing for yourself everything that sane governments elsewhere should provide, uh, then you're, uh, you're actually, like they say in Nigeria, you're on a long thing because uh, you have to step up to that responsibility. So we're doing this because of the responsibility. We're doing it because we felt we needed to let it be known that we were ready to be responsible, you know, and, um, uh, you know, we're, we were ready to take on, to stop complaining and actually start doing. And that's the reason why we're doing this. Again, also, we had given opportunity to those people in front of us. Uh, and of course, that culminated in uh, the uh, swearing in of uh, the, the former General Buhari, now President Buhari. And we felt that uh, we were pretty much disappointed after all the long wait and all the complaint about the preceding government, uh, Jonathan and Co. We felt we were thoroughly disappointed at the final outcome of that process, you know. And um, in that regard, we, uh, we, we felt it was time for us to, to also show that we had come of age. Right. Now, um, Honorable, first of all, I can start calling you Honorable. Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> now, you, you are aware that there's a large number of political parties that are already registered. Yeah. Uh, the last time there were 38 of these political parties that meshed together, we were told that there's somebody sponsoring them, but we don't want to talk about that now. Mm. How are you going to deal with this mushroom? Because don't you think it's going to create a kind of confusion for the people? Because you, you can imagine Absolutely. if all the... the, the, the it's now 68, 68, 68 registered. Uh, candidates. And counting. Uh, and counting. Right. What, what um, you, in every... Yeah. It, that's a funny thing because in every multitude, the um, somebody manages to stand out. Mm -hmm. Those who will stand out will stand out, mm -hmm. you know, in any multitude. So one will not say because there's going to be a multitude, then you have a, a unique product offering to bring into the uh, into the world. You mm -hmm. refuse to do that, you know. It happens in commercial transactions, right? If uh, a new phone company wanted to come out in the UK for now. Uh, you know, you do your you do your maths correctly, and you come out and uh, compete in the market. And uh, we've been we've seen situations where uh, some new products come up, and then they manage to like gain prominence. For example, I know things like Leica Mobile, Lebara, they are pretty. Mm -hmm. They are not that old, mm -hmm. and I'm sure since they came, some new ones have come. Mm -hmm. So we're very much confident that um, we can actually do a lot in this space. Uh, that we can actually um, make a mark in this space. And that we did by, 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 from the beginning, the level of transparency we showed, the fact that it was easy uh, for people to join us and the people have been joining us. Right now, we're actually over 50,000. Uh, even though if we went online, we would see that we're like 49,000, but we have a lot of backlog. Of new members to to add up and all of that in the system, which will be done today so tomorrow. You, you to so yeah, so one of our unique selling points is of course that transparency, the ease with which people can join our system, and our unique selling points that we have. We're mostly run by young people. I'm the chairman, national chairman, and uh, we also, uh, you know, we 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 we've actually uh, given people a lot of responsibility. Uh, at the federal, at the state, and the local government levels. Uh, we are saying that we can do it and um, that the young people of this country must step up to the plate. You know. So some of those things, uh, like our transparency and what have you, uh, our accountability, um, our, our crowdfunding, the fact that we have not capitulated to any old politician to go and collect money from them, those are things that I believe that have set us apart. And plus the fact, perhaps more importantly, that we're run on ideas. So the biggest currency in um, ANRP, apart from our data, uh, our currency is not the Naira or the dollar. Uh, the first currency is the ideas that you're bringing in, uh, the strategy that you're giving us, your ability to perform and deliver on your tasks that have been assigned. You know, we're not a party of mere dreamers. We're a party of doers, OK? And, um, uh, that's that, but also a very important currency is our data. 
because we are focused on the numbers. We know that, look, to you, for you to win, you need the numbers. Mm -hmm. So we always encourage our members because to go out. Anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. Go out and get more members. And, you know, we, we log on data, that later. We log it in the system. We're very serious about it. We are the only, only, only part, political party in Nigeria, the only one to have a call center. We have a call center. If you are a member today, you're likely going to receive a call from any of, uh, of the ladies in the call center or any of the gentlemen at the call center, you know, greeting you very nicely. Oh, how are you today? How, is, how are things going for you? How are you coping with the Nigerian you scenario? You put that personal touch. Oh, yes. And then they now also remind you, don't forget to pay your dues because we're running the place with the dues and the donations. The dues is just 5,000 Naira every year for those who every work. Every year. Every year, that's about uh, 10 pounds every year for those who are working, all right? But um, for those who don't work, we don't collect anything from them. Uh, right. And then, you know, so the, uh, we are based on what the most important aspect of our funding comes from donations because there's a limit to which you can drive the 5,000. 5, Nigerians aren't very used to it, you know. And so you have to sometimes appeal to those who can give 50,000, 100,000. We also are the first party in that country to set a limit on the upper, an upper limit on donations. So we say that no matter how much money you have, we will not take more than 20 million from you. Because those who watch from the sidelines and hope to take over parties that they haven't worked for, they, are, they deal in billions. Mm. So anyone that collects billions, anything more than 20 million on our behalf, has acted, yes, of course, control, but if you go behind us and collect any such money from anybody, you have actually act, acted ultra via the constitution mm. of the party mm. and can on that basis be asked to resign. Okay. Right. You are a young man. Mm. You have, um, you know, uh, a pedigree in terms of uh, the business and the things you have done. You will agree with me that the Nigerian political terrain is fraught with danger. Mm. Uh, spiritual, you know, physical, in every realm. Why are you putting yourself through all this when you can just sit back and enjoy the, the fruits of your labor? Absolutely. Um, I don't know. I think it's my wiring. Um, for those who knew me when I was growing up, they used to say I have always had this uh, acute sense of social justice. Mm -hmm. And I think um, in my own philosophical way, and because um, like I said earlier on, <clears throat> I'm a writer. Um, I, my, my, my time is best spent in front of my computer, typing out stuff. Um, you know, um, I've, I've written over 2,000 articles, and um, I've written four books, and there are two more books coming out right now as we speak. You know? mm -hmm. So I, uh, perhaps if I lived in the olden days, in the times of, um, perhaps I'll be uh, rubbing, trying to rub shoulders with all those all-time Greek philosophers and so on. Uh, I believe uh, life is what it is. For every moment that one is living, mm -hmm. it's a gift, it's a privilege. However, what are you doing with that privilege? You know, what you do with that privilege is what matters more than having the privilege of living. Therefore, it won't matter. There are people who have lived up to 100, 120, but added little to life. And there are people who have lived up to 33, you know, like Jesus Christ, and uh, they made profound impact such that, you know, people are still talking about them today. I would rather want to align with the Jesus Christ of this world, not so at that level anyway, but mm -hmm. in terms of the impact. And then I look at life and I look behind me, if a lot of friends that we have lost, um, you know, and some people, life, when you live through life, sometimes it depends on luck. It's not only by what you are able to do. Sometimes if you are not lucky, people get unlucky and they develop diseases and they take care of that one. So if, if all of these things are there, um, that tells me that the little time that one is afforded in life, you have to spend it doing something radically different from the rest of the, of the, of the people. Okay. And apart from that, you know, Nigeria has a unique, unique problem. I tell people for free these days that Nigeria is easily the most mismanaged country in the world. And I say that without um, equivocation and with all due respect. Given mean? the amount of resources that we have in terms of human resources, mm -hmm. in terms of material resources, the opportunities that we have, in terms of even our weather, yeah. uh, Nigeria is grossly mismanaged, underutilized, totally un ineffective and all of that. You know. So um, it's, a, it's a big issue for us. You know. uh, Nigeria is a place where you have 84 million 
84 million people who are, who are, who are extremely poor. We are out of 180 million. There's a, there's a website called worldpoverty.org, worldpoverty.io, not .org, mm -hmm. worldpoverty.io, where this thing is, is logged. Anyone that's listening can actually quickly check, mm -hmm. worldpoverty.io. And in that worldpoverty.io, they, list, they, there's a, they log all the, peop all the uh, extremely poor people in the world, country by country. Nigeria overtook India on the 17th of January 2018. India has 1.2, 1.3 billion people, and I, I don't know if you, in case you know, yeah. India, India is actually the fastest growing economy yeah. in the world for the past four years, and there's something they did, you know. Um, but India has now really started to bring out a lot of people from poverty, just like China did. Mm -hmm. India may have brought out about 200 million from poverty in the last five, six years. It's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that Nigeria can also, if we were serious and if we had leaders, who were half serious, you know, we should be able to bring out 50 million people from, from poverty. Nigeria also has the infamous, uh, 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 um, you know, garland, if I like, if I put it that way, uh, to that we have 15 million children that are out of school. Yes, that's and crazy. It's, it's ab absolutely, it's not only crazy, it's despicable. Yeah. It is it's the, it's a, it's a mindless thing to do. Yeah. It's something we should declare immediate emergency on because when you have 15 million children in a country out of school, you have actually mortgaged the next 50 to 100 years for that country. So the, the, real, the real survival of Nigeria, mm -hmm. whether you are going to keep on being there, whether, even whether in whole or in part, or whether we're not going to be so vulnerable that uh, one day, maybe if the Chinese or the Europeans or the Indians, some people will not come to that country and enslave us, and we will become slaves to them in our own country, and they will take that land because they know what to do with that land, it's a clear and present danger. 15 million children, three years to 15 years, who wake up, most of them are boys. And they don't go to school. They don't go to school. They, they no go education. around the place, whether in the north or south of Nigeria, but more of the problem is in the north. But I must tell you, I mean, because you guys are in the diaspora, you, you come home though, but we live there. I must tell you that whether in the east or, or the south, west, or the south of Nigeria, right now, the population of children who are out of school is growing, even in those, popul in those places. Right? The, the fact that we are producing Agberos and area boys mm -hmm. and Yandabas and whatever it is you call it, it is totally unacceptable. And therefore, that's the reason for the urgency. I feel that, look, what is my life? Yes. I can put this life on the ground in order to try and solve this problem. Okay. With, with all these narratives, which is for me perfect presentation, the question now is if you are elected, what are going to be your priorities? Which area are you going to be looking at first? The area of security, economy, education. Oof. Which area do you think? Let me put it this way, sir, that um, we know. I, I, believe, I believe there are five things Nigeria should learn to do first and foremost. List them. And the first thing is you should learn to feed yourself. Mm -hmm. OK? You should learn to, you know, must feed yourself. You must clothe yourself. Mm. You must shelter yourself. <coughs> talking about Abraham Maslow now. You must secure mm -hmm. yourself. There mm -hmm. are five things. Okay. Okay. You must be able to secure yourself, and you must be able to clean up after yourself. Okay. So these are very basic stuff. Feed yourself, clothe yourself, shelter yourself, mm -hmm. secure yourself, and, and clean up after yourself. So that's the basic place that Nigeria needs to start from. Any government that goes in there should be ready to deploy across all that. Otherwise, you are so vulnerable that is as if you didn't exist as a nation. Look, um, in terms of feeding yourself, that is very basic. Yeah. People are talking, I don't even see agriculture as a business. A agriculture is beyond business. It's mm. so important. Look, Netherlands just next door is the second highest exporter of food in the world. Mm. Netherlands is 43,000 kilo square yeah. kilometers, mm. which, is, which is half the size of Niger State in Nigeria. All right, so this Netherlands is doing that. How are they going to do How are they able to do it? In which case, we're seeing a scenario where even the power to produce in agriculture is beyond the landmass that you have. It's about technology. Yes. So, and we're talking of even organic food. We're not talking of inorganic GMOs and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so look, we, I realized lately that the Nigerian government over time have not done much in terms of educating the farmers 
on better ways of producing what they do beyond giving fertilizer, which operation, operation many times, and all the rest yes, of them. all those ones became personal projects. But, you know, beyond giving them fertilizers, which just make the things grow, we have to go and study what they're doing in Netherlands. I realized I was past, I went to Manchester two days ago. I was past coming back and at some point you see some greenhouses, right? Mm -hmm. And you see that people are able to plant things in, in a sort of double-decker, triple-decker yeah. scenario. Yeah. So you don't have to keep it on the ground. Yeah, so it's it, like a, so a nursery. A nursery and mm -hmm. all of that. And sometimes in the Netherlands, they use that nursery and they're growing so much tomatoes. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't even have to lift them from where they are and take them elsewhere. So, so look, <laughs> we, so we are not going to be able to, to be tell, yeah. we are not going to be able to tell the farmer in Nigeria that, look, the subsistence farming you are doing, don't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. You have to assist him in that subsistence farming. To make him grow, otherwise, to upgrade him. Upgrade him. Otherwise, you know, we are also, the problem we are likely going to face in Nigeria is a scenario where, the big guys like the Abbasan job farms, the Yako farms, and all, they move in, then they move these this small holders out, out, and they go into penury. And by the time they're moving in, they're moving in with mechanization, meaning that few people are required to farm a vast amount of place. So, so we need to be a should be exclusive right of fire. Exactly. Okay. There should be a kind of, see, that's the kind of thinking we like. And, you know, that mechanization should be something you can also deploy at a small level so that these people can live a better life. Look, the, if we produce if we produce 10 times the amount of food we produce in Nigeria today, it's only better. If the world produces 10 times the food it produces today, it will only be better for the world. So even if you say that farmers are producing too much, they let them go and rest. There's nothing wrong with resting yes. if people have produced enough. You know? So that's, but that's as far as the food is concerned. Mm -hmm. you, you, the biggest war that Mahatma Gandhi fought with the British in India in the 40s, before they got their independence and even after, was the war on textile. We call ourselves 180 million people, perhaps 200 million people. We cannot produce a single Ankara that we use to clothe ourselves. And we used to have those, we we used to have those we used industries. To have All the industries are gone. Of course, see, part of the problem are the wrong choices. I'm an economist. We make a lot of wrong economic choices. And we have some popular people who will come and tell you all sort of rhetoric. Oh, privatize everything, privatizable, you know, do it now, sell them off, sack the people. In 1986, we had this idea of SAP. And, you know, it's very interesting that um, all of the things that we were advised to do in the SAP era, mm -hmm. um, you know, all of the things we were advised to do in the SAP era, when it was 2007 in Europe and in America, when they went into what they called the Great Recession, mm. they did exactly the yes. opposite. Okay. So in, they were asked to sack people, we were asked to privatize. In the U.S., they did not privatize, they nationalized the banks, they nationalized yeah. the car manufacturers. Mm -hmm. they, they, of course, the U.S. is big on monitoring the number of people that are employed on a monthly basis in the U.S., but we were asked to sack people. They told us to increase interest rates in 1986, we did, okay. all right, but when it was their turn, they crashed interest rates to 0.5%. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so it's just uh, the way these things work. You know, but exactly. And you talk also about clothing themselves, shelter themselves, also where possible providing security for themselves. Okay. When you provide security for themselves, mm -hmm. so but we did, we're going to go on a short break now. So when we come back, so we're going to continue with this your vision, set of your vision. That's fine. Thank Don't you. Sir. Heritage, heritage television. television, promoting African culture and heritage at its best. From talk shows that concern you to both local and international news that relates to you. From grassroots football to African children's programs. Heritage Television. We cover your social and special events like weddings, birthdays, church anniversaries and so on. And broadcast them live on our apps and online. Heritage Television. Broadcasting everything about culture and heritage. Heritage, heritage television. television. We've got, We've it, got covered. it covered. Do download our apps on both Android, iOS, and Windows mobile platform. Heritage, heritage television. television. Your very, your own, very own TV, TV station. station. Welcome back. Uh, we're still uh, having a chat with... Uh, uh, presidential aspirant, uh, Mr. Tokwe Faswa, and uh, we've been talking about what and what. He started by telling us what he wants from Nigeria, mm -hmm. that he wants to be president of Nigeria, based on his uh, uh, qualification, now not, not mm -hmm. university or uh, whatever. But 
and uh, but where we are now is uh, he said that uh, some of his visions are going to be in the area of uh, uh, and one hundred and eighty million Nigerians. Each one of them should be able to feed themselves, Absolutely. clothe themselves, Absolutely. provide uh, you know basic things for themselves. Shelter, shelter. So, shelter. so we, we now talk about the shelter because then we need to make yes. progress. So you know, sir, yeah. I would probably want to say that um, you know, listen. Uh, what I'm doing is I believe that Nigeria needs to press reset. All right, let's reset, reset the default. Button. Right, yeah. go back to default. Let's go back to 1960. You know, we just got October 1st, 1960. We just got independence. What mm. should we have been thinking about now? That is not to indict the, the old men, some of them who are late now, most of them, who got the independence. Because at the time they got independence, there was no library anywhere in the world mm. that would tell you this is what you do mm -hmm. if you get There's independence. There's no blueprint. No blueprint. Mm -hmm. There was no internet, no Facebook, yeah. no information sharing. Mm -hmm. The best they had were they came here to the UK and got some public admin training. That's but it. see, you don't expect city the, and gives. exactly. You don't expect the white man to tell you the entire thing to do. Yes. So but so what I'm saying that look, let's go back to that 1960. What should we have been thinking about? Um, mm -hmm. I, and part of this, I was, um, you know, my idea is informed by. I saw a, a clip by Jerry Rawlings, you mm -hmm. know, in, in Ghana. Uh, he gave an interview after he was uh, president to an Italian um, journalist, and he said, look. When he became the, the, the head of state in Ghana for the first time, being a flight lieutenant, he got into several small planes or helicopters, flew to def different villages, yeah, and he realized and that, yeah. you know, just to get an overview, and well, he, they realized, the city he realized, he realized, absolutely, he said, he said there is a parasitic relationship between the villages and the cities. Mm. The, the cities, the villages produce the food, the city sucks it. So by the time the villagers are producing the food, everybody rushes to the market at the same time. How during harvest, mm. the prices are crashed. Yes. The city people come and take this from them. They said that the water they drink in the village is worse than the water they used to flush toilets in the city. In, in the city. And it has continued ever since. In fact, it's become worse. Mm. Nigeria is a place where we have never planned for the shelter of our, of our masses. Never. The closest we got was during Jack on the era. Yeah. Mm. When be, but even so, it was shoddy. Even, even it was what? It was shoddy. It, no, not only shoddy, it was elitist. Because the houses you built in what they call the Jack on the estate, I've stayed in a couple of them in Festa. I've stayed in one in Okafa. Amuwa. I've stayed in Amuwa. The thing funny, that's the tough yeah, one. You lot. know, so these were two bedroom, three bedroom. Uh, but what, where is the plan for the room and parlor kind of person? Okay. We have never built that. Sorry, sir. Mm -hmm. So that's the part on shelter. And these are things that would, if we focus on this, we would double our GDP in three, four years. We would, look, as an economist, I tell people, look, our problem is not particularly inflation. If your economy is growing at 20% per annum, okay. inflation at 15% will be natural because growth drives inflation. Yes. Interest rates at 18% will not particularly be a problem because mm -hmm. growth drives interest rate. The problem we have right now is that Nigeria is projecting a growth of 1.6% in an era where inflation is doing 13% and interest rates are doing 35%. Yeah, it doesn't matter. That's, 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 that's not so right. You're, that's you're not basically, you're basically you are milking this economy to death. You are, you are milking the people to death. So shelter is important. And I'm mm -hmm. saying that I did a research when I came to UK, went online, you know, and look at how, how are they able to do it that in the whole of UK, you will not see rolling shanties. Mm -hmm. You will not see people crawling out of bashers, what they call bashers, mm -hmm. houses yeah. built with sacks and yeah. so on. Yeah. How are they able to do it? How are they able to provide? Them? So mm -hmm. I realized so there was a time. Social housing. Social, ha social, social housing. Look, sir, let me tell you, I live in Abuja. There are more than 300,000 houses that are vacant in Abuja. Luxury houses. Absent. Most of them have swimming pools in them. Sometimes you see the swimming pool is green with spirogyra. Mm. That is called dead capital. Yeah, because it has not been used for years. It's mm. not been used for years. They were built, some of them, as estates. But people are, you know, we, you know, when you build and you say everybody is targeting luxury living, luxury living. The problem is not luxury living. Mm. The problem is basic living for mm. the basic, for the poor. And, and it's, it's not good for economy. So, so that's what I'm saying, that look, we should feed ourselves. So yeah. We should be able to clothe ourselves. Let's fight the war on textile. Then we should be able to shelter ourselves. We should be able to secure, sir. Well, our people, our leaders are going to the United States of America, going there, sir. Please tell us. Look at the scandal that happened recently. Yeah. We transferred five hundred million dollars to the U.S. to produce uh, some 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 helicopters for us, which they mm -hmm. told us they will deliver in two years' time. 
It doesn't matter if the, the challenges of today in a supersonic world, a, a world that is so dynamic, if the challenges of 2020 mm -hmm. will not be the challenges of 2018, we don't care. So you we gave them the two five hundred million you. dollars. Are, are you saying the, that what? amount of money yeah. that wait, could wait. have been even used Cash in, money. In, yes. in, in terms of uh, our, our our graduates to go and you know what, bring me helicopters? Exactly. Is that what you're talking about? Sir, let me tell you. Sir. Let it's me, not, it's, not the gra I'm it's I'm only the graduates. Yes. Yes. Sir, it's not the graduate. Our mm -hmm. next phase of development mm -hmm. in Nigeria lies in the universities and the polytechnics. Yes. Let them give us the prototype. Give them that $500 million yes. as grants. You don't have to give them at once. In fact, look, release $50 million, Look, release $5 million into the engineering Get departments started. of those. Yeah. Get them started. Give them projects. From the moment you come in in year one, you're thinking of solutions. You're thinking of projects. Okay. And I'm, that I'm, is how we're going to solve even our electricity I'm not problem. So, but before you, the last thing I want to say is very important that we are unable to clean up with our, uh, ourselves. That's the last level. Yes. And that is very fundamental yes. to the mental development of the Nigerians, sir. Yeah. Recently, my friend, Mr. Ambody, I've never met him before. You know, we didn't give him a lot of chances, you know, when he was coming. He felt mm -hmm. he wasn't too eloquent. But when he came in, he did one or two things. He said, look, this guy, let's look at this guy again. You know, I mean, the little things like having labor is in Ketu, in uh, Urochoki, in uh, Jota and all of that. The guy was transforming mm. space. He said, oh, this guy is gold. You know? Then the guy now made a mistake. You come to UK to bring a company that will clean up after Africans, after, Ni after Nigerians. You route the company through Dubai for tax purposes, SPV. And then you come to Nigeria to say a certain company called Visionscape is going to clean up Nigeria, like Lagos State. That is an anathema. It is spiritually and otherwise wrong. That Nigeria should be taught how to clean up after themselves. There's nothing in recycling that we should not be able to do because it's about it's about it's about you know re, 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 rewiring the thinking of the people. Mm. We live like animals. Mm. So until we're able to feed ourselves, clothe ourselves, shelter, shelter ourselves, ourselves, clean up after ourselves, and also shelter and also secure ourselves, those are the five things. Today, okay. Nigeria cannot manufacture one bullet. Mm. And someone said that if we had a war with Niger or Chad or Benin Republic, we're lucky to be run over. Right. Let me ask you this question because I'm, I'm going to, you see, this is what, like, every other man in the street will be thinking. You're very glib. You're talking the talk. Can you walk the walk? Your party, have you got the manifesto for your party? What is in Absolutely. the manifesto? These things. Right? right. And then, as a political party, do you have offices? Because you're small. Uh, uh, we're not you have small. Offices? We're okay, you are a young. Let me use. You're a young political party. Do you have offices in the federal capital, state capitals of the federation? And finally, because we had a political party here in this country where the man was the party. Mm -hmm. oh. Who was that? Nigel Farage. Oh, Farage, okay. Hmm. The man was the party. The moment he took, he, 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 he let go of the party, the party started sliding. Oh. Disintegrated. Is it, uh, is, is, is uh, 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 ANRP you or are you ANRP? Okay, thank you very much. So, first of all, our manifesto is on our website www.anrp.org.ng mm -hmm. mm -hmm. all of these things i'm saying and more are inside that manifesto okay it's a manifesto that thinks outside the box okay all right and says in a very simple manner look let's invert the problem and uh, let's think about it again and uh, let's shock the world mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. sometimes it may actually not be so out of the box it may also be a case of look Cut and paste. How do they do it in Europe? For example, sir, yeah. in the singular, um, the only economic summit that was convened by this present government, uh, APC government, um, they did. They, they they convened something in in I think it was uh, April or March 2015 when they were coming in. They had already won the elections. Mm -hmm. uh, President Oshu, I mean VP Oshibaji was there. Of course, Buhari did not attend. I'm not sure he's interested in such things. Perhaps he doesn't want to be bothered anyway. So. They were, everybody was there. They brought a lot of professors from the diaspora. And everybody was standing up and saying, look, we can do this thing. We can make money from uh, Solimina. We can do, make money from our Greek. We can do this. But after everybody, uh, 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 you know, when you articulate your point, people will say, but we don't have money to drive this process. Where do we borrow money from? Ah. So I was trying to give them some of my own ideas. Of course, I wasn't. But luckily for me, a white woman, sounded British, was recognized like two rows away from me in front. And she stood up. 
And she said, look, I've been to a few countries around the world, maybe she's a diplomat, mm -hmm. and that, uh, you know, I've been hearing you guys talking about how you can't fund your budget, how you can't fund your projects, and so on. She said, she said, Nigeria is the only country I've been in the world where you don't get a fine for overspeeding. Right. And she said, how then do you hope to fund your budget? And she sat down. Of course, mm -hmm. when it was time for them to answer, they were talking off point. And that point, I just said, look, these people are hopeless. We can generate this go. money in time. How do they do it in the UK? Mm -hmm. said, and you know why they can't find people for overspeeding in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. Because the big men want to overspeed and no one can stop them. Impunity is what killed Nigeria. Rule do of, you know who I am? Do you know who I am factor? You mean, do you know who I am? That is what finished Nigeria. So our manifesto is there. Okay. In terms of the office, we are not small, sir. We know we are more than 50,000 in terms. There's no other party including PDP and APT, that have been able to, that can put a finger on their members at that level. Of course, they, they, the APC and PDP, they, they leverage on the poverty factor, which is what they themselves have been, the feudal system that they are on, mm. they are digging and uh, they are propagating. Because so, it's cheaper so because, for them, isn't because, it? Because it's cheaper, because what you have to only do, you just go to Ojuelegba bus stop, go to Maraba bus stop, go to, go to Kao Aduna, and the moment you pack the car, say, look, I'm from APC, I need one more. I need people to join. I need two, two million people to, 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 to come with me to this, uh, to this uh, whatever. We'll give you one 1,000 naira. Because the poverty is in the land, and mm. the people have been so mindlessly pulverized. You would always get the number. Then you would tell me you have people. You, they don't have mm. members. They don't have members as much as we have. So yeah. in terms of offices, at least right now, we're in at least 25 25 states in Nigeria in terms of offices. offices. In terms of members, we're in all states without exception. We're in 774 local governments without exception. Okay. Because we made it a broad based thing for people to join. Mm -hmm. This tomorrow, Saturday, we have our state congresses in about 14 or 15 states across the country. We have done about, we did about 16 states earlier on, well, 17 states earlier on. We started from the southwest of Nigeria. It was glorious, mm -hmm. you know. Of Farage, I am not the party. Okay, fine, I'm the national chairman. I'm actually the convener of the whole idea. But I was quick. Look, people don't understand. Sometimes when someone does things, and you know, Nigerians are not used to that kind of thing, they mm -hmm. think everybody's thinking like them. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm, number one, I tell people, and I'm going to say it now. In terms of a national chairmanship, I'm not interested in more than one term. I'm not like Wally that will say something and deny, deny later. One term, I'm out. I'm a private sector person. I'll go and do my business. I'm not interested in power, but I'm interested in the things that power can be used to achieve. I am not a party, the party, I have vice chairman, I have a strong national secretary. We are very communicative. We have about, in our party, we have about 500 WhatsApp groups. Right. Every, in the UK, we have about two or three or four. We are in the US, we have a diaspora group. We have, we have in China, Russia, we have in, in China, Russia, Qatar, Dubai, Ghana, South Africa. Mm -hmm everywhere that matters then in nigeria we have up to the world level so people are speaking up you know okay. sometimes right. sometimes I, I must say although sometimes because we have a lot of young people and they're they are not very good with communication they don't even know when they're insulting you whether yeah you know uh, uh you know Tumba Hosseini and somebody you're on the group you know sometimes mm. at your age you can be a bit jarring yes what someone say my friend shut up what are you talking about there it is well, jarring not it a is, bit it jarring, is jarring yes, you know? jarring. So it they, is. but you see ANRP is a university I tell them ANRP is a university it's going to teach you how to think teach you how to talk we have a mantra renewal renaissance and respect renewal renaissance for the country Respect, respect for ourselves, for our elders. We don't care. Look, you may be worried, maybe about some joy, you may have messed up in the past, but we still respect you mm -hmm. for your age. We respect our elders, we respect our resources, we respect our, our children, we respect our unborn children. And yeah, there's one thing the nation. There's, there's, we respect the nation. There's one thing, sir, that we always key into, which we got from one of the thinking of Lee Kuan Yew. And Lee Kuan Yew, of course, the guy that turned around Singapore. Singapore, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. He wasn't much of a Democrat. You know, you call him a, a benevolent dictator. Mm. There was, he hated chewing gum. He doesn't like seeing the marks on the floor, so he banned chewing gum. Yeah. Imagine. Imagine someone banned chewing gum. Today, they say, oh, human rights people would actually shout and all that. But he used to say one thing. He said, if democracy is meant to be a government where majority carries the day, mm. he said, do you understand that the majority of the people at any given point in time are the children yet unborn? Mm. Accept the country if you are ready to annihilate yourself. If you want to continue to exist, whether as a whole or as a part, mm -hmm. you should understand that those you have not born 
are more than those who have been born. Therefore, in any decision you want to take, you have the people, the majority are those people who are not yet born, and their 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 their, their wishes yes. must carry the day. So you I, must always right, think. Right, right. I have somebody uh, here who is asking a question. Okay, go on, Jerry. It says, what agenda have you got for disabilities? Absolutely. Regarding Nigerians. Mm. Because this okay. is yeah, one yeah. sector of our, uh, a section of they our population totally that neglected. is neglected and overlooked. You find people crawling mm. on their chairs, on yeah, the main road. It's, and all. Yes. Mm -hmm. it's terrible. Yeah. Can it, we it, quickly it, It's the kind of orientation that our leaders have had in the past. You know, I'm sorry. I've actually mm. written about that in the past. And you know, uh, if you look at some of our culture, our traditional culture is not favorable to the disabled. Yes. When someone believes that you are like that, because when you are coming in your former world, cost. <laughs> you are caused. Mm -hmm. So now you are like that. So we, are, we, we, you know, we are more than we are. We are. We, are. we come to London here. We see when you the go to the train station, yeah. they will tell you they are very particular about it. You have to think for the vulnerable. So that's the thing. Our thinking is inverted. First of all, to take care of the vulnerable, the children, the uh, they don't call them disabled now. The physically challenged people, physically challenged, uh, yes. you know, and then you step up the you know one way or the other. So it's about listen. The first thing that we are going to do is to be totally selfless. All right. There's a little that we need. How many cars does people need to park in their in their yeah, garages? Companies. How many houses do you need to have around the world? We have seen the folly of men. Go to Metama today. Every two out of three houses is unoccupied and dilapidating. I went into one the other time that some guys were using for a project. I'd never seen that kind of mansion in my life. The massive all you think that is a cinema house, and I swear mm -hmm. some deluded old dead politician in Nigeria was living. <laughs> and how many we are not going to make it. We are living in a world now where right. the children would rather live in a condominium, just one or two bedrooms or one bedroom up there. It, it's a, a nice little space, yes. is all they need. Mm. You know, so we are yeah. big on disability. In fact, we have some of them in some of our ex school level, yeah. okay, to ensure that we begin to get okay. some inclusion um, in this regard. And also, we're big on, uh, on women, we're big on, on, on children. And uh, honorable talk by uh, uh, first of all. All these good talks, nice vision, nice everything. You will agree with us, or with me, yeah, that there is, must be a kind of a mechanism. I want you to give me the, that, what I'm talking about. Because you're looking at a situation where mm -hmm. in our country, and this is the truth, values are just not there anymore. We, like uh, a nation of high lawlessness, Galo is everywhere. Cowboys. So, how are you going to restore that? Because most of this your vision, most of what you've been talking about, if this what I'm looking for to hear from you to tell our viewers, if it is not in place, you cannot get anything done. Because you also alluded to part of your part of your pitch that the cowboys, the, uh, boss garages, and all that kind of thing. Even the politicians, they're even worse than the people in the garage because the element of uh, decorum in, uh, in, the, in the garage because the, their uh, main number one talk comes and say mm. quiet they will be quiet and they don't steal so much money how are you going to bring values laws regulations in place to enable you to, to implement carry those to carry out these dreams you are talking about how are you going to do, exactly what right. what, are, what are we looking for how do you do it how are you going to do it oh well, well okay sir that's the great way the best way to to look at the issue of values is to define values and many times i've seen scenarios where people actually don't understand that word value and i want listeners to listen very attentively mm. to what is value mm -hmm. it's a very simple thing to define what is value the value is to say what do you value that's how you know your value yeah so if you want to say, what's your value? If I want to know what your value is, ah, now I say, sir, what do you value? You tell me, ah, I value honesty. I value time consciousness. I value diligence. I value perseverance. Mm. I value godliness. So the values, usually many of the times, the values are, are universal. The whole world, I always joke with people that even when a 419 company, those days when 419 was raining in Nigeria, and people would set up a company, and actually what they're doing underneath is 419. So if they went to a newspaper house to advertise for accountants, they would say, we want an accountant that is honest, that is diligent, that is hardworking. Those are the values that mm. universal. So the first thing is to be able to define to Nigeria and remind them, okay, what our values are. Traditionally, even in terms of religion, 
the values are the same. If the both religions that we practice in Nigeria, including the one that people don't like to associate themselves mm -hmm. with, are the traditional religion. Mm -hmm. They are perhaps even even more strict in that regard. Mm -hmm. In the olden days, it was a case of thunder striking somebody to death or something, you know. So, but but both both religions, um, um, they emphasize honesty. They emphasize friendliness. Mm -hmm. They emphasize simplicity. But look at us. We have replaced that with gluttony. You have someone like my friend Dino Melaya, who is also a folk hero is to some people in Nigeria. You are from Yagba area in Kogi State, where I went past the road the other day. I lost two tires. It's it's a, it's a scene. It's a scene out of a, a horror movie. And then you are showing us how many Bugattis, how many Lamborghinis, how many Ferraris. Ferraris how many, you know, look, it, the guy is not serious. <laughs> All right, you cannot come and twist the fact. And our children are growing up and are looking at that. And if you look at our music, many times it's about women's uh, genital organs and mm. what the boys want to do with that. You sometimes you come and listen to British people sing. You listen to people like James Blunt, like this other guy uh, mm. that uh, Ed Sheeran and co. Mm. You you listen to them. Sometimes you get inspired by the kind See, of ideas. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed and, 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 though, because so, you know, in those days when I was working for radio. We have something we call NTBB, which means not to be broadcast. Oh. We will, the music library will listen to the lyrics. If it's not right, you don't hear it. There's a guy that sang a very popular song recently about, uh, I think the Kosewe Kosebo guy. I used to like some of his songs, but this one was in, over the about the, you know, what people make up, got up for yeah. chemical. Like, that is Nigeria for you today. We've yes. gone overboard. And look, the, the boys, the young boys, you can't even blame them. Because if so, those ones in the in the houses, uh, the, the national mm -hmm. assembly, those as executive, legislator, judicial, they, not they have not also said the, the right morals. They have no morals. They, 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 you know, they are, it's about gluttony. In this year's budget, 2018, there's more than 400 to 500 billion that was budgeted only to buy Toyota Prados and Land Cruiser in a country that's struggling. Then they can't pay 18,000 Well, you can't pay 18,000 minimum, 18, minimum wage. And the ones that have been promised that minimum wage in many of the states, they have been owed for more than one year. It is heartlessness. See, Nigeria has set itself up. The leaders of Nigeria, they set themselves up for the French Revolution kind of scenario. It's against their interest. So the warning is that they must begin to reverse that nonsense immediately. So that's the reason why you have lawlessness. And one of the things we are going to do, we can approach it from the level of jobs. From ANRP and myself, you know, which is something I align with, uh, our idea is to say, you know, Nigeria doesn't have a problem with graduate unemployment. And I'm, yeah, I want people to be shocked when I say that. Our problem is not graduate unemployment. Our problem is secondary school, post-secondary school unemployment. And it used to be when in the 50s, 60s, 40s, 50s, as a matter of fact, there's a book written by one gentleman which he called the, the, This Present Darkness, Philip Smith, or what's his name? He's dead now. And he's, he, he wrote, the, you know, he captured some of the things that used to happen around then. And in 1950, the colonial master wrote to London then, mm -hmm. the guys that was uh, supervising Nigeria, that look, he said, he said in 1950, that 90, 90,000 Nigerians finished primary school and they cannot find jobs. He said, but the year before, there were 45,000 people who finished primary school. Mm -hmm. But now they finish primary school, they cannot find jobs. The whole idea was, the moment you finish primary school, you should be useful. Exactly. You can now further yeah. later. Must have later a minimum on, one skill. La later on, it became secondary school. But for before people say, oh, it's, we are now more than everybody needs a BS, the MSc, PhD, come to UK. The focus is on secondary school. Yes. The moment you finish your secondary school, go and get a job. If you want to go to uni, you can still mm. go to apprenticeship. Uni. Apprenticeship and you all know, that. Let skill. In, in the yeah. US, the same thing. Yeah. At best, you go to one or two years of what they call community college yeah. and get this get a skill. Mm. Polytechnics. Is, and everybody wants to go to Harvard. Mm. So you see, that's the problem. Our leaders are non leaders. I would say that perhaps we we've not been lucky to have more. You know, people who try maybe three or four leaders over time. The rest, they you find it easy, you know, you, 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 you kill the educational system, you create your own private university and your private secondary school because you want and to private milk, health care. You milk the system, right? You know, then, so you, 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 and then when you are ill, you also travel abroad and tell the rest of the people. In the whole of Nigeria, perhaps there's no more than one radiotherapy machine for 180 million people. Is, is that, is, is that cancer, one functional? Perhaps it's even, it always packs up.
And, you know, uh, so, uh, so, 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 in terms of what we want to do is to look at the level of job to say, first of all, we are going to focus on jobs, post secondary job, and we are also going to remind our youth that listen, we are going back to this value system work before you eat. And there's nothing wrong with a minimum wage work to put small money in your pocket. Or everybody cannot be billionaires. The focus should not be on the person. Look, there are going to be a few Mark Zuckerbergs appearing once in a while. But everybody cannot be in the room, play with computer, open to make a business. No, that is not going to happen. You know what I mean? So that's it. We're going to refocus them that look, at the end of the day, simple work, hard work. Smart work is good, but hard work is important. Mm -hmm. And like they say, the harder I work, the, the luckier I get. You know, so we're going to be looking at going back to something at the level of Mamsa right. times ten, yeah. all right? To okay. employ mass number of youth, send them to the villages to go and reorientate our people, interact with our people. As a matter, like I said earlier on, the village is where Nigeria's next renaissance is. We forgot those villages. The governors came recently, these present governors, they emasculated the, the local government even further. The little tutu nera that used to drop to the village level, everything, think about whatever villages mm. you are from. And think about it. Is there any government presence? Zero government mm. presence in every of those right. villages. Uh, and that is where the work is at. Right. So we're going to be getting a lot of mass mobilizers, mass view from the grassroots orientation yeah. kind of people. Put some tutu naira in their pocket. Send them to go and interact with our people. Uh, be, be, because of time, and uh, we still have one or two more questions. But then the subsequent question we're going to ask you, we want a quick answer to them. All right, great. Now, uh, Jerry, let me give you the way quickly. Right. Um, Education, the edu educational budget in Nigeria is pathetic. For a country that is as rich as Nigeria, and from what you are telling me right now, everything that you are saying has to come, that it boils down to education of the people, rewiring of the mind, and that comes from enlightenment. Enlightenment is a byproduct of education. Mm. What budget are you going to, what a, a, a percentage of the national cake are you going to allocate or how, mu how much premium are yes. you going to put and then okay. quickly when you touch on that i like you to look at the minimum wage in nigeria All right. I, I can understand that you we don't want to pay that much but the so-called legislators they, they they have a whole lot of allowances packing their salaries our workers don't have anything going for them except that 18,000 minimum wage. What are you going to do about that? So, uh, please, okay. one minute because yeah. of time, yeah? Oh, one, minute on the, one minute on each one of the questions. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Quickly, uh, I mean, okay, I'll give you two minutes on the education. So, so, first of all, to say, let me start from the end, you know, that mm. what they operate in Nigeria is what I call smash and grab economics. Yeah. A scenario where the, the, the legislator is, are there. They have the power to allocate any amount of money to themselves, so they allocate it and they take it. Yes. They are, most of the allowances are not approved by the Revenue Mobilization or the Salaries and Wages Commission, yet they take they it. They take it. It was only recently we found out that the senators get 13.5 million as, you know, do made a media allowance, you know. Just, some kind of allowance, just, you know something, it, it, 700,000 for something allowance? No, we're talking of 13.5 13, million. That's, million, million. that's, million. that's the main one. Yes. Every month. They literally to you know, they, they call it a... Uh, Entertainment, inco inconvenient allowance, or something like that. And we're genuine. I think that you are genuinely so, inconveniencing them. Because perhaps, <laughs> you know, so, so this is going on, and not only them. Even the guys in the executives are getting their. Own. The way it works is they have interacted with some of them, and they tell me that look, you know, why would they, an essay to the government, essay to Buhari, be driving the latest Toyota Land Cruiser, full option, bulletproof, whatever, and they who were elected by the people cannot get that, so they get it. I so see. where is the state of the poor people in this? Nobody considers that. So you know now in terms of minimum wage, yeah, I won't promise a hundred thousand minimum wage. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Yeah. Uh, however, you know, I think what we should be thinking about is this eighteen thousand. What does he buy? So there are ways that I would rather than I would I would I, by now because it's a bit dated and me and you were discussing earlier on mm -hmm. telling me about even in the UK every year you have to think about inflation rate even if it's three percent you top mm -hmm. up your staff salary mm -hmm. by that three percent mm -hmm. or your pension by that three percent that's okay inflation is three percent let this guy live at the same level as he was last year even if he can increase it so you can look at inflation if inflation is doing thirteen percent now it was coming down from twenty percent there's nothing wrong and you say this twenty percent you can say look let's increase it you know minimum wage by about 40 percent to balance them back up 
But let me tell you, sir, Nigeria civil service is a, is a small civil service. It is a small, toxic, and top-heavy civil service. A certain parastatal, I think, is NNPC. During the Orensai report, they realized that NNP, the, 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 the percentage of senior staff in NNPC is 89%. So the junior staff have is more 11 chiefs, you percent have more chiefs than Indians. Indians. <laughs> and you have a multitude of chiefs and just a few Indians. So number one is to say, what are we going to do about this top heaviness? Right. In the UK here, the 20% of all workers work for government. I've done the research. Yes. Mm. The largest employer in the UK is, one, is, uh, is NHS. NHS, 1.7 1. 1. 1. 7 million, million, million people. people. The, shockingly, too, I'll tell you that the, the, the percentage of public sector workers to all workers in the US is 17%. The largest employer of labor in the US is, 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 is Department of Defense. All right, that's it. and they employ 3.7 yeah, yeah. million ahead of M Walmart, M ahead of McDonald's, and so on. So, sir, before you stop me, so, so the, this, this minimum way, let's think about what can it buy? How can we strengthen the Naira? And the way you can strengthen the Naira is to go back to the first thing feed yourself. If you are feeding yourself and a lot of production is coming mm -hmm. out from the agriculture, that means that that minimum wage, even at 18,000, 18, can buy a lot more food than it can. And mm -hmm. the people can be a bit more comfortable. Uh, you know, clothe yourself. That means that we can have cheaper, the dirty, the dirty that, he, that Gandhi used to tie, that mm -hmm. thing he used yes, to tie. Yes. It, it, uh, it was a major war then because the guy said, this dirty, this white cloth, you know, people call it teru or something yes. like that. That this teru is the one we can produce. That's Our right. people should produce and wear this teru. And the English colonizers then said, No, what the, this guy is spoiling business from us. They are bringing and, in and clothes I remember him saying there was a lot to do with you. It's we that, that need to call ourselves. Yes. Exactly. So, you know, so that's the way you can strengthen the one that they are earning now. So that it goes, it goes the, a long way. The mm. second way to strengthen what they are earning now is what I said earlier provide the job for the you to. If you provide your for the youth, say, or if you give a lot to them, they look, anybody who is post-secondary school, you have finished secondary school, you are from an Indian family, come, we'll give you work. But okay, see, all we want you to do is, you know this gutter, from here to here, clean it every day, two hours work, and then we'll pay you, you clock in by biometrics, yes. and then we pay you like 15,000, even if maybe below minimum wage, put that money in their pocket. Why, what does that do for the people working in the ministry? Those dependents are off their neck. Exactly, yes. that will so argument, man, and that it has augmented indirectly. Mm. And what have you done? You have now created, you have created a new class of spenders. You have created a new class of spenders who never used to have money, and their choices in terms of what they buy will be different. But the first thing they will do is they will buy food for their family. Avoids the economy as well. Exactly, mm. and so in terms of the education budget, yes, we're not going to budget for education per se. There's a there's a there's a booby trap there, because with the kind of education we have now, even if we give fifty percent of the budget to education, we're going to get the same results. Sometimes some of the professors have also disappointed themselves. Nigeria talk about sexually transmitted dis uh, mm. degrees. Yeah sexually transmitted degrees and the one that they transmit because they're able to sort people and all it's that. It's because there's no rule of law in place. Exactly. Now, what we want to do with education, like I said earlier, is we're going to let them know that, man, you don't understand. If you're in university or polytechnic, you're not going there just to score a first class. You're going there to, to solve Nigeria's problem. Dump it on them. You know, so like I was saying earlier, that look, if, if we say, look, let's give 15% to education, and that is going on, and we're going to go back to the public schools, Rather than look, recently they said they want to, they are giving another 100, 100 licenses for private universities. Why can't Why? they expand University of Ife? Mm. Ibadan, University of Ibadan, see last time, land is. is it's uh, massive, yeah. Jan, Jan Tirere. Mm -hmm. Let the VCs know that they are going to be taking care of a bigger a bigger structure. Yes. All our public universities can be expanded. Mm -hmm. Why are you going for and private right, and, I, and, I, you can, I, and you can pay the professors and the listing where. However, the last one I'm going to talk about mm -hmm. is that, look, imagine, we said just now, we said Nigeria paid 500 million dollars. Dollars. Cash money to the U.S. Give them in advance. That is God. a held somewhere I am, I am, generating I am, interest. I am, I am, I am a, I'm a finance person. I came to this country. I studied financial markets and derivatives. I know what you can do with cash on hand, how you can leverage money. You understand? Mm -hmm. No, we have given Donald Trump a quintessential businessman. Love him or hate him. The guy is a businessman. And they will give him, you know, love and love for, we gave him $500 Five, million. Half, dollars. half, half, half a, a billion. billion dollars. Look, America will never give and any country. And it happened to be a kind of a prepaid. Any for, two, country, for two years. Prepaid, yeah. Any country, America will never give any, look, 
I was with the, the U.S. Department of, of Commerce in 2014. I was with some of them. And what they call the guys that were heading the, what they call the small business agency, SBAs. And they will tell you that, look, they are so patriotic that they are all about American business. They don't care where you're from. America first. America first. And they have a mandate that you don't give one dollar eh, of American taxpayers' money to any company that is not an American company. That's only if you cannot find an American company. It's tied to interest. And tell me how you will it not find an American company. It's tied to interest. When you aid to African countries, you nominate the American company. So you give them the yes. money yes. and say, okay, go and to try and implement it. So, right. that, um, so we can deploy this five hundred million dollars to those universities. That would be extra budgetary. That's the kind of thing that they should be doing right now. Extra budgetary allocations, project tied, going into yes, universities. Yes, give them specifications. To, 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 exactly, and not only in the the the, the, the engineering people. Mm. They are the ones that will solve uh, the, the the electricity problem. They are the ones that will solve our technology issues. Yes. We have to begin to own some things. Yes. They are the ones that will solve our textile issues. Yes. We cannot look for as long as we are bringing equipment from abroad. We and without any impute, even in the oil sector, as I'm talking to you since 1956, when crude oil was they discovered up to date, we don't have a singular impute in all the equipment and that we are still used flaring in the oil gas. And of course, we are flaring gas. Gas that's supposed to be piped into in Ghana, all homes in Ghana. That gas. For a long while now, for about 10 15 years, they've been using gas as an alternative to fuel cars. They create just like they do here, they create yes. a different yeah. tank Breed for it, and then uh, a hybrid mm, and all of that. Hybrid, yeah. Nigeria, right. we fled it anyway. Right. Uh, again, like I said, time is just not on our yeah. side, and uh, I wish we could have more time. But finally, uh, people of my age group, how are you going to deal with us? Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm over 70. Yeah, with us. Yeah, Pension, with us. Pensioners. Listen, young people look. Young people have been. Are you, is your government Nigeria. going to be owing us money? No because, way. Wait, wait a minute. Because what Abraham? But Lincoln, some of you are still very active, like yeah. you now, sir. <laughs> yeah, because, you are very active. Fired, <laughs> because what uh, Abraham Lincoln said. Yeah. Abraham Lincoln said, uh, "You you're not going to know them until when they're in power." Yes. Exactly. We will be able to be talking to you Absolutely. when you're in power. Will we will be able for one, to reach out to the ordinary I people. For one, I mean, you look. I believe. <laughs> I'm an ordinary person. I came from nowhere. I have absolutely no delusions. I have zero sense of entitlement. In that way, I'm a kind of freak in that area. Uh, I have zero sense of entitlement. I don't believe uh, people should carry stuff and be running after me and all of that. You know, some people are in need for the power. I'm not going in for the power. So, and our party, we have that ethos as well. Uh, but however, the young people of Nigeria that are getting into a certain delusion right now. And they are beginning to get some feedback if they are wise. When you go around saying, oh, it's all about young people, all these old men have... You can't be making statements like, all oh, these old men, generation, they are useless, they are this and that. Because at the end of the day, even if you are lucky to get the power, you're going to need the wisdom of the, of old, the old ones. <laughs> yeah. And the passion of the young. Like it is said, the quotes I like to always say, it says, passion is a scene of youth. Mm. Pride is a scene of middle age. And prejudice is a scene of old age. So even that passion may be an advantage if you misuse it, it becomes a sin. Middle age is the point where people you find their friends at different places. That's when you make your money. You are likely, if you are not if you are not careful, you fall into hubris and pride. Old age, the disadvantage you usually has is a scenario where people like Buhari, if you meet him today, people say, "Where are you from?" Say, "I'm from Abekuta." Say, ah, so these Abekuta people. In fact, that when 1940, 1948, one Abekuta man did him something or the other. I can never forget. Prejudice. Him. Prejudice. So all of these things should be managed, but I think that we can work together. Fantastic. Um, the only one area we did not touch, maybe because of time, I was when I asked when I was talking about values and lawlessness in our society, mm -hmm. I want you to bring uh, the area of rule of law. Because once rule of law is in place, as you can see, there's no magic in this country. There's no magic accountability. Uh, there's no magic in America and Canada and Holland and all that kind of thing. You understand? It's because rule of law is the driving mechanism. The, that mechanism must be there. Sir, I'm afraid. Yeah. How you... Sir, I'm afraid. It's okay. Sir, I'm afraid. I've, I've come to, using Nigeria as a case study, I've come to you know, begin to think that perhaps the more the law, the more the sin. I've seen scenarios so the rule of law is not going to be important. One person did a fraud somewhere when I was in banking, and he was supposed to be arrested and jailed. It was the chief justice around that time that called and said, my friend, the guy is my cousin. You guys want to do anything with him? And 
the guy was free. So there's Nigeria no is a accountability. country where no accountability, where law is bent. That's why I mentioned impunity. Impunity. This, do you know who I am? That's what killed that country. How are we going to fix but, that? But so see. the laws are there. Yeah. But if the laws, oh, the Sorry. courts have summoned people and they refuse to appear. But honorable talk you, 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 you have spun you have the law. Uh, hello. You understand what I'm saying? Just a minute, sir. No, the, so the you, law you is, are is, is, you is are constant. Excuse me. But we have you to, are sparing. No, hang on a minute. Yeah. You are sparing to be president of Nigeria. Yeah. And you now have these loads of problems. Yeah. And you and I know very well. You, are, you, 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 you said you study here. You have so many things you've achieved at the age of 46 or whatever. But you know that without rule of law in place, nothing, nothing you cannot works. achieve. Absolutely. You cannot achieve. Absolutely. And, and I, I expect you is, I to say, yeah, how yeah. are you going to put rule of law as the form, you know, you understand me, that is, go, I'm going to appray my government on rule of law. How are you going to do it? No, because you know, that, listen, that the judge you talk about, if it were being a civilized country, he will never make that call. Obviously. Of course. Obviously. Because he knows of he course. has the fear of so sanction. I'm just, I'm just he knows the sanction. You. No, he's, 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 I'm trying to let so, you know. I'm trying to let you know. Why, yeah. I'm just trying to let okay. you know how far bad things have gone. Well, we the, want to fix it. You want to fix it. People, have brought, people will mouth rule of law. But the moment that you begin to call around and say, look, that guy is my guy, leave him. This one is my person, leave him. And you are not also ready to subject it. So the first place I think we should start. Mm. Is leadership by example. Leadership by example is what will drive the rule of law. If the leaders themselves are ready to subject themselves, and look, I run a political party now, I'm beginning to see that somewhere ingrained in Nigerians is this idea that, look, if, if I can bend it, let me quickly bend it and move on and all of that. So, so, so that's the thing. So I, I don't want to, look, Yadwa came and did the rule of law. You know, he's a lovely guy, you know. Is late today. At least he tried. The only president who has ever declared his asset openly. This other man got there and were hearing stories and all of that. You know, if that would have probably driven the system. Imagine if a president came and actually declared his his, his assets openly. So you know you're prepared to do that. And absolutely. In fact, it's inside the constitution of our party. If you win anything in our party, declare your assets openly. What is the big deal? Now, who, 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 will police, who will police that? No, no. You declare openly. It's in the constitution. Meaning that if you actually win anything on a party and you don't, you have gone against that constitution. Yeah, but who is going to police that? Who's going to the party? The party is supreme. The party can call you to order. The party can go to press and say, "Look, this guy has won and is supposed to do it." So beyond the rule of law, beyond the rhetoric, or beyond the out, outside pronouncement, why do we not tell you he's not doing rule of law? But himself and everybody down the rank and file have decided that they are above that law so when they are above the law <laughs> so how are, are you how are you as a president you, 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 you are going to fix that how are you going to fix that problem because the problem is standing leadership right right leadership is standing at your face now as we speak leadership by exam. remember the woman that said the only country where you have never you don't find people for over speeding when you put 15 SUVs on the road, bought with taxpayers' money, with and you're going, going help him. and you are going at 180 degrees per, per kilometers per hour, 180 kilometers per hour, nobody under the sun can stop you and say, oh, God. Then the next person, you, you, are, you are president, the next thing the minister does that at the smaller scale, the commissioner, the state government, why is it we're using 80, self, between 50 and 80 percent of all policemen in Nigeria are oh. carrying people's bags up and down. Okay. Uh -huh. Leadership by example. By example. Leadership yeah. by example is what to activate. So in essence, what you you're saying is that when you become so you, president you, you, of you Nigeria, you carry your own briefcase. Absolutely. What's all right. Uh, you don't even have a briefcase. Uh, a very final one. I want to. We want to wish you a very good com successful success. campaign, and uh, hopefully we'll be sitting to, uh, with you again as the president of Nigeria. Who knows? Thank you very much. Where we believe. I mean, the the most important thing is you believe in yourself, and you. I'm sure the, the you just said it, uh, leading by example, and maybe the, the example you setting out we uh, encourage. And your followers to believe that our leader he knows what he's doing and he knows what is won and he has vision for this country. Put that all together on this side. We want to wish you all the best and thank you very much for appearing on our program. You're welcome, sir. It's thank our pleasure. Thank, thank you very much. Pleasure having you. Okay. God bless.